Welcome to week one, video four of the SAS Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to learn about importing datasets and how to sort datasets. Before we begin, I would like to quickly recap that in the previous video, we learned about SAS libraries. SAS libraries are a very important way to be able to access and save your datasets that you are working on. We learned last week that Every time you open SAS, SAS comes with certain default libraries that are already specified. These include the temporary work library, which, we, which we've talked about, and certain permanent libraries, which we have not covered because they are beyond the scope of this bootcamp. Uh, we also talked about creating your own permanent libraries using the lib name statement as shown right here on the screen uh, in order to save your folders to whatever data sets that you want. Now, on top of these permanent and temporary libraries, I do have to include one other piece of information that is specific to this bootcamp. As you are looking at the code and as you are participating in this bootcamp for the purpose of the next six weeks, you will find that I am going to share with you guys several data sets, code files, and other things for the purpose of the bootcamp alone. I am doing this through SAS bootcamps specific content course creator options or tools, which means that this lib name that I'm showing on screen right now is a permanent library that is read only for all of you guys. As the course creator, I can read or add or delete files to this library, but you can only read files to this library. So when you're working through SAS, please make sure you don't try to write files to this library. If you try to save a file to this library, SAS will throw you an error, and that error is related to the fact that you don't have permission to save files to this library. So as you start working on SAS, every single code file I give you will have this lib name statement so you can read files that are related to this class and this bootcamp. But when you want to save your output files, please create your own library to do so. If you want to create your own library, the way to do it is to write your own lib name statement, which begins with lib name and then give it a, like, give it a name. I'm gonna call mine my, my lib followed by the directory where you want to save those. Within SAS Studio, pick a folder. You should have something that looks very similar to this on your version of SAS Studio. You probably don't have as many folders, but you should have something that looks very similar. I'm going to, let's say, save mine to um, my content. If I want to do that, I just right click, go to properties, copy that location, and then paste it here between some quotation marks and then end it with a semicolon. Now I have my library to which I have access to save files. So, so you should be doing something similar on your end so that you can save all the files that you are created to your own permanent library. If you try to save files to the class library, that is related to this specific bootcamp and you do not have permission to save files to. Okay. Jumping on to this video's topic, I want to talk about importing data sets into SAS. It is not very often that when we are working on a research project, the file that we begin with already happens to be in SAS format. Often we are working with data that we manually entered into Excel. Perhaps you downloaded an SPSS data set from Qualtrics or some other software, or maybe you have a Stata file or an R file or something else that you need to convert into SAS before you can start working on your project. You can do this within SAS. In fact, SAS gives you the option to import almost any file type into the SAS data format type. But in order to do this, you have to go through something called the import routine. Now the import routine is one of those rare routines in SAS, which actually lets you do the import through a point and click procedure and through code. Most things within base SAS itself, you have to do the program yourself. You have to write the code to make it work. But within SAS import, there is an option to use a point and click. So I'm gonna show you guys how this works within regular SAS, and then we'll look at how it works within SAS Studio because there are some interesting nuances there. Uh, and then just keep in mind that the import procedure that I'm going to show you is the very basic introductory import. Uh, within health services research in the pharmacy administration department where I work, importing is not something that is super common. We do have to import data sets from time to time, but we don't have to do um, various types of import. So, so I'm not going to go over all the nuances of import today. I'm just going to show you all the basic input. Couple of things to remember as you're importing files. Uh, while you can import from many different types of file formats into SAS, I strongly, strongly recommend that you import from a data format such as a CSV file, a comma separated value file, or a TXT file, which is a text or a notepad file. Uh, 
Sometimes even SPSS or Stata files will be fine, but I strongly urge you not to import data into SAS directly from Excel. That's because Excel has some hidden formatting in the background that you can't usually see when you open a file, but they will throw your import routine off. And trying to uh, fix that import routine to import from Excel can get finicky and it's usually time taking. So I would recommend you convert whatever files you have into a CSV, a TXT format, or maybe even an SPSS or Stata format really before you import into SAS. For today's example, I am going to be importing this file that is called import underscore example. Let's open and look at it. This is a comma separated values file. It's being opened in Excel, but it is a CSV file. This file has 50 rows of data with the first row having the variable names, patient ID and marital status. This variable, uh, the first variable is just an ID for each individual. The second variable basically says if an individual is single, if they are married or if they are divorced. So that's a three level variable with one or two or three. Keep in mind, this example is only using numeric variables for the import, but really you can import uh, string variables, character variables, you can import date variables and any other types of variables as well. I'm just trying to keep this example as simple as possible. Okay, so let's go through the import routine. I'm going to first show how to do the point and click process and then we'll show how to do the programming part as well. And we'll do that in regular SAS first and then switch to SAS Studio. So in order to start the point and click process, go to file on the top left of your cars, uh, tool board, and then go to import data. Once you come here, you have to tell SAS what type of file format you have. I'm gonna select comma separated values and hit next. And then I'm gonna to navigate to my folder where this data set is located. So that, there's my folder in week one, it's called import underscore example. I can click on options to see what options I have available to me. Uh, there is a important checkbox here that says get variable names from first row. If your CSV file does not have variables in the first row, please uncheck that. And if you uncheck it, uh, SAS will automatically assign some variable names for your variables. They're usually variable one, variable two, variable three, and so on and so forth. But if you do have variables, go ahead and check that box. So SAS understands that the first row of data is actually the second row in CSV because the first row is the variable names. Hit okay there, you hit next. And then SAS asks you, where do you want to store this output SAS file? Now you can store that in any library you choose. The work library is the temporary default library. I have some permanent libraries here, but I'm just gonna store this in work for now. And I'm gonna call my file import. Import underscore example. That, yeah, I'm gonna call it import underscore example. I'm gonna hit next. And this next screen of the import wizard basically tells you if you want to actually write code for doing the same import routine for which you're doing the point and click process. And SAS will let you you know, write that code by SAS will write that code for you and save it into a file if you show it where to save it. So I'm going to say that I need it saved right here in my folder on my computer. I'm going to call that SAS program file import underscore example. So we say consistent with the variable names. I'm going to check the box replace if it exists so that if I've done it once before, it just replaces that file. I'm going to hit it, hit finish. So my as soon as I hit okay there, my log showed a few lines. It basically said that all of these things were run. I'm gonna scroll up to make sure there are no warnings or errors. I only see notes, which is good, which means the program successfully ran. And it tells me here that the data set work.import underscore example has 50 observations and two variables. And you can see that the process actually took 0 0.07 seconds. It's a pretty small data set and SAS can be efficient on most my own laptops these days. Um, I'm opening the file. You will observe that I am opening it from the Explorer tab on the left and I'm actually going to the work library, which is where the file is located. And you'll see that this is the file. It has two variables, 50 rows. It's exactly as we saw it in the CSV file. So we know the import was successful. Every time you import a CSV file or any data set into SAS, I strongly recommend you scroll through it and look through it to make sure there are no importing errors. Uh, errors are often common when you are importing data sets into SAS. Now let's go back to the folder and look at the program that SAS saved as an output along with this import data set. I'm gonna double click on it and you'll see this is the piece of code that SAS ran in the background when I hit the point and click options using the import wizard. So the point and click import wizard is useful, but if you have to do this again the next time and you cannot remember which options you chose, it's easier to depend on the code instead of depending on the point and click option. So what I like to do is I like to use this piece of code and I will copy it 
I will paste it into my code here, into my projects code, so that the next time I'm working on this project, I know exactly what code I use to import the CSV file. And once you copy it, if you want, you can run it one more time, and it should give you the same exact output. So whether you do the point and click or whether you do the copy and paste, it's the same thing. Now, if you do look at the, uh, if you do use the code, you'll see that the code is pretty simple to understand as well. This is a procedure, so it starts with proc and ends with a run statement. Um, the other things here that are important to note are the out equals option tells you the name of the output file. Uh, this one, for example, is work.import underscore example, which means the import underscore example SAS file will be saved in the temporary work library. And if I close SAS, that SAS file will be automatically deleted. If I want to save it in a permanent data set, I can always change this to a permanent library like class.data import underscore example, which is a library that I had created at the, at the top of this file. Similarly, the data file option tells you what file to look at. This is just the folder path on my computer, and this is the import underscore example. Um, some of the other things on here are related to the options that we looked at in the point and click op process, but I'm not gonna go over them for now. But this is the short and simple import process within SAS. Within SAS Studio, if you want to do an import, things are slightly different, not not at the essence of what is happening in the background, but the process itself is slightly different. Uh, let me show an example of how this works. I'm going to navigate to the same file we saw earlier, import underscore example.csv. Uh, I have uploaded this into my folders in SAS Studio. Uh, I will make sure this is available to you guys through the box folder so you can import it from there uh, into SAS Studio. Now the import underscore example CSV, there are two or three ways to import this file within SAS Studio. One, you can click on this button right here and click on import data. You can also click on um, this option right here. Um, excuse me, right here, there you go. Uh, you can click on new import data right here, which will also do the same thing for you. But the easiest way to import data into SAS Studio is to just click on that file you wanna import and drag it into your workspace. It will automatically open a new tab for you when you do that and it will give you a few display options. You can either look at the import purely as a point and click option by clicking on settings right here, which will show you what are the options you can do, or you can look at purely the code version of the import which SAS automatically generated for you, or you can see a split screen, which is what I like to see, where you see a little bit of the point and click and you can see the code that it generates when you change the options. The Point and click part of SAS Studio is very similar to the import wizard we saw on the PC's SAS version. Um, you can see that the output file name is import and the library name is change. If you want to change that, you just go here and type whatever name you want, whatever library you want. Um, this is the checkbox for generating SAS variable names from the first row of data. If your first row of data does not contain variable names, please uncheck that box. Um, and here's, here's the code. This, is, this code reflects the option selected in this settings folder. And if you wanna run it, just hit this, you don't have to select anything, just hit this running man. And then you can go to the log here and make sure there are no errors or warnings. And as I'm scrolling through, I'm only seeing notes in here, which is really good. If I only see notes, that means that the import routine ran very well. And I can look at the output data here to make sure that the data set is imported well. And as I'm seeing that, I can see that the data was imported just fine. So I don't have any problems with it. Now, if we wanted to do what we did with uh, SAS, we can go ahead and copy the import code into our code file. If you wanna do that, you can go to the code part of the tab here, and this is the code. So if I copy and paste this code into the file, you should be able to import it through code without using point and click. Now keep in mind, the SAS Studio version of the import routine actually does a couple of different things. It imports the data set for you, which is what these two steps do, and it runs a proc contents, which is what we learned in the first video when we looked at um, uh, exploring a data set in SAS. You can delete this if you want, and it will not show you a proc contents. If you leave it in, you'll see that the results tab actually has the proc contents output, which shows you the names of the variables, how many rows of data you have, how many variables you have, and some other uh, related information. So I'm gonna copy and paste just this piece of code into my code file so that I know where, I know what I know what I need to run if I wanna import this the next time and I don't have to use the point and click option. One quick thing to note here is that 
This import routine is the exact same as the import code we saw in SAS, with the only difference being that in the data file option, instead of giving the whole file path and the file name, SAS actually uses the file name option. In the file name option, it basically says, this is the file I want to refer to, but I don't want to type that every single time, so I'm just going to call it re ref file, and I'm going to use that word ref file in the data file equals option so that it refers to the same thing. So you could have just copy and pasted this thing here instead of ref file, and the code would work just fine. But this is how SAS Studio's import routine prefers to generate the code. Either way, it should not make a difference. Your output file should look good. Now, remember, our output file here is work.import, so that should be in your work library if you want to open the work library, just navigate to the libraries tab on the left, open my libraries, expand work, and you should see the import file. And if you open it, there are your 50 rows of data with the two variables. This was the file we looked at in the CSV format when I showed you earlier. Okay, uh, I'm gonna not save this piece of code here because I've actually copy and pasted this, whatever I need out of this into my, into my own project code file. So I'm gonna hit don't save. Uh, and we're gonna move on to the next step of, the, of this video, which is the sorting procedure. This is the last thing we are going to cover in week one of the SAS bootcamp. Uh, this last procedure is primarily intended to sort a data set. So if a data set has multiple variables, but you need to sort it in an ascending or descending order, you can use the sort procedure. Uh, unlike the other procedure we saw earlier, which was the sort, which was the proc contents procedure, the sort procedure does not actually produce an output. If you remember, I mean, the proc contents procedure basically produces an output which gives you a description of what's in the data set. The proc sort actually just sorts your data set. So there is not a output, quote unquote, to look at. Your output is basically the sorted data set. So in this case, I will show you guys the syntax for a proc data, uh, for a proc sort, and then we'll look at what the file looks like. Before I do the sort, I wanna actually open the file to look at it. In this case, we want to sort the psych file that we saw earlier. Um, let me see where my file is located. Uh, my file is located right here, which is in my class folder, class library. I don't think I've created that library while this video was going on, so I'm gonna open that. I'm gonna do that for you in just a second. But this is the file, the psych file that we are going to sort right now. This file is already sorted by patient ID which is patient ID one, patient ID two, it's sorted ascending by patient ID, but there's a few other variables in this data set we can sort by. We can sort by sex or gender, which has zeros and ones. Uh, there's a few other variables. Let's work on the sex or gender variable here um, to see if this will work. Before I do this, I first need to execute my lib name statement. Make sure that executed correctly. The libref class was assigned successfully. It's good, let me open my libraries. There is a class library, and this has a file called psych, which is the file I was just showing you guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and sort this file. I'm going to sort this file by sex, all right? Now, when you sort this file by sex, the way to say it is proc sort, which is the syntax for beginning your proc sort procedure. And then you follow that up by telling SAS what data set you wanted to sort, in which case this is data equals psych. But remember, psych is in the library folder, is in the class library, so you need to mention class.psych. You cannot just say psych, right? If you don't specify this library name, SAS will assume that the file you're talking about is in the temporary work library, which is the default library for SAS. But if you look in the temporary work library, psych is not in there, it's in the class library. So you need to make sure you say, go look for the psych data set within the class library. And after you say that, you end the statement with a semicolon, follow that up with a by statement, and the by statement basically lists all of the variables you want to sort the data set by. Okay, now this file was sorted by patient ID to begin with, so I'm gonna sort it by sex. And uh, after your by statement, you write a run statement and, and finish that off with a semicolon. I'm gonna select the code here, select run. Let's look at our log. There's a proc sort, I'm seeing notes. I don't see any warnings or errors, which means the code worked well. And you can make sure that it has adequate number of rows because it says here, the data set class.psych has 50 observations on five variables. You can open your results, but there are no results this time, right? Uh, the proc sort, basically the result is the output data set. So we can switch over to the output data where we can preview 
the file. Uh, when I'm previewing the file, I see now that the sex variable is actually sorted. So the first 19 rows of individuals are actually sex zero, and then the next up to 50 are sex equals one, which is an ascending sort of the sex variable. And you'll see that it has actually assigned each sex to the appropriate patient ID. So it has not just sorted one variable, it has sorted the whole data set. Now, this is an easy way to sort a data set, but there are some things we need to realize. Uh, if you are as picky as me about version control, and if you enjoy the fact that SAS lets you create a new data set every time you uh, manipulate something in the data, then it should bother you that the proc sort actually overwrites the data set. Because when you run a proc sort, it takes an existing data set, sorts it, and then saves it in the same file name. There's not a new file name, it's the same file name. Now, that is the default, but there is a way to not have that happen. And I'm showing that right here in my next example. In this example, I'm saying proc sort data equals psych. I need to mention my library name, class.psych. And then I'm saying out equals psych underscore sorted. So this is basically saying that after SAS sorts the class.psych data set, it should save the sorted file in a new file, which I'm calling psych underscore sorted. And, and this new file will be saved in the library work because work is the default and temporary library for SAS. If I wanted to save that file somewhere else, I should have mentioned the library name, for example, class dot right here would have been just fine. But for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to type work dot because I just want to save the sorted data set into work. Um, in my by statement, I've added a little more nuance here. Instead of just sorting by a variable, I want to sort by the descending order of that variable. So here we want to sort by the descending patient ID. Remember the word descending only applies to the first variable you list after the, after the word descending within the by statement. The rest of the code is just the same. You conclude the by statement with a semicolon and then write a write, and then you write a run statement with a semicolon as well, which wraps up your proc sort procedure. Let's run that. Make sure our log looks okay. You see there are no warnings or errors. I'm gonna move on. There is no result for the proc sort. There is an output, and this output you'll see is sorted. So the patient ID is in descending order. We begin with patient ID 50, and we go down to patient ID one. This is what we wanted. Pay close attention here to the table name in the preview of the output data. The table name is now work.psych underscore sorted. So what this has done is it has taken the sorted file and saved it in a new file. And the original file class underscore psych, I will show you guys is now still sorted by sex, which is what we did earlier. The output file psych underscore sorted is now sorted descending according to the patient ID. So I hope that makes sense. Um, the last thing I want to show you guys with regard to sorting data sets is that you can actually sort a data set by more than one variable. Let's say for example, that you want to sort this data set by sex, but within sex, you want to make sure that patient ID one comes first, patient ID two comes second. So within all males, you want to further sort the data set by patient ID. When you want to sort by more than one variable, you basically list all of your additional variables within the by statement. Nothing else in the proc sort procedure changes. So the first statement with proc sort data equals still has the data set name class.psych. Uh, I'm saving my output sorted data set in a work library. Um, in the work library, and I'm calling that file psych.sorted. So this is the same name as earlier. So it's just going to rewrite that file that was in work library here. Uh, the by statement now includes two variables. Both the variable names are separated simply by a space with nothing else in between. No commas, no tabs, just a space. Um, and we finish that off with a semicolon, write our run statement followed by a semicolon and run it. Keep in mind, because we have not used the descending option, both variables are going to be sorted in ascending order here. So I'm gonna hit execute. Um, I, I find that I have an error in my code and you'll see quickly the error says that file class.psych.data does not exist. Um, one thing you will learn in SAS as you start to work on these things is that errors are just a way of life when you are a SAS programmer. There are going to be errors all the time. In this case, it says it doesn't exist because I think I had a spelling mistake. I had a typo here. It's P-S-Y-C-H, not P-S-C-Y-H. So if I do this, my error should go away. 
let's look in the log and you'll see this time there is no error, right? I just have notes, no warnings, no errors, which means my output data should look fine. Here's the output data site underscore sorted. It's sorted first by sex. So all the males are at the top and the ones, I, the ones are male, the, uh, the zeros are male, the ones are female. So all the zeros are at the top, ones are at the bottom. And you will observe that within sex zero, patient ID is actually sorted in the ascending order, three, four, five, so on and so forth. And within sex one, we also have patient ID sorted in an ascending order, right? Uh, so that is the advantage of sorting by more than one variable. Uh, that concludes week one's worth of SAS bootcamp. Um, I hope this was helpful. Please uh, look through your homework. I've posted a homework on your box folder along with the code file that I've worked on right here and some of the data sets that you need in order for you to work through your homework. The couple other things I will mention is that if you are working on this, you will come across errors. Uh, you will run into errors that you do not understand. If that happens, please feel free to reach out to me. You can tweet at me your questions. You can tweet at me about things that you figured out when you are uh, working on your SAS. And if you figured out an error and it took you some time, share it with me. You can tweet me at Dr. Sujit Ram. That is at D-R-S-U-J-I-T-H-R-A-M. Please use the hashtag SAS Bootcamp so that other people working on the SAS Bootcamp can also share their successes or their troubles with you. I will be monitoring that hashtag as well so that I can answer any of your questions. Um, look forward to seeing you next week. Please reach out if you have questions. Thank you.